Stay with us here on World Insights. Still to come on the program, a bridge between East and West. Celebrity investor Jim Rogers, along with his daughter Happy, tells us about cultural understanding in a time of turbulence. But then I quickly found out that the Chinese are cultured, educated, ambitious, hardworking. And then I realized that China is the next great country in the world. Welcome back. You're still watching World Inside with me, Tian Wei. And today, let's continue our special theory, Pathfinder, on China-U.S. relations. The world has changed rapidly, but many find themselves in bind due to a failure to understand one another in international relations. Some people, like world-famous investor Jim Rogers, seem to know how to roll with the times. Mr. Rogers has long been curious about cultural differences. Back in 1988, a young and brash American boy spent 36 days on his motorcycle traveling from Shanghai to Pakistan. He had his long ride filmed, and the journey gave him a first-hand experience with China that was then very remote to the Western world, especially to the United States. Later on, he settled down in Singapore and had two daughters. And both of them, in fact, learned speaking Mandarin really well. Earlier, I had the pleasure of hosting Mr. Rogers and his elder daughter, Happy Rogers, who is quite a celebrity now already on Chinese social media. Our conversation went from relations between China and the United States to cultural exchanges between two countries. It all started from a poem from the Tang Dynasty. 解落三秋叶，能开二月花。过江千尺浪，入竹万竿斜。It's it perfectly captures nature's beauty. And it's very sh four short, very line, very four very short lines. Oh my God! Do you feel pressure? Don't <laughs> no, you no. feel pressure? I know that I'm hopeless. I <laughs> no, know that I'm yeah, hopeless. You're not but but they, but right. one of the things I have I've learned a lot of Chinese culture from them. But in all these poem, Tang Dynasty poems and so on, they're so short and to the point, mm -hmm. and they say a lot. It's yeah. amazing. There's so many of them. I didn't know that before. Concise and precise, uh, yes. exactly through the poetry of China. But, you know, one of the things people are so fascinated by your family is, I mean, you are well known for being a wild guy. I mean, you <laughs> ride motorcycles throughout the world and certainly a very successful investor. But, you know, your life has reached a stage that you care so much about your family and your family are absolutely fascinated by the Chinese culture. How is it? Well, I realized uh, when I came to China in the 80s that China would be the next great country in the world. And I t used to tell people, teach your children Mandarin. And then I had one. <laughs> so <laughs> I what do I do now? <laughs> so, but, but as you can see, we moved to Asia because of China. Both of my daughters speak fluent Mandarin. The little one is just now in a Chinese movie. Oh my as a God. matter of fact, what's the name of it? Tianhua, and it's fabulous. See, the sister is already doing some publicity. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, no, but she's 10 years old, and, and they called us. We didn't call them. The, the producer called up and said, we want your little girl to be on the, in the movie. You speak Mandarin. Because mm -hmm. they, they saw her speaking Mandarin on the Internet or something. So, no, we're everywhere. We, we love China. We're, we come here a lot. Hi, everyone. I'm Happy Rogers, and I'm back. Today, my little sister, B. Rogers, is going to be my guest star. She is going to be performing in Mandarin. 大家好,我的名字是快乐罗杰斯。今天,我的妹妹小蜜蜂要给大家表演。我的名字是小蜜蜂,我七岁。今天,我要给你们表演门后有个人。门后有个人。if that was too fast for you, 门后有个人, 手里拿个盆, 砰地声响, 
，是盆头的门，还是门头的盆？ That was a Chinese tongue twister that B learned at school. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Nineteen eighty four. You came to China. Long, long time. Think about it. Already thirty five years. Yeah. No, no. I was terrified when I came because American propaganda all my life had said the Chinese are evil, vicious, dangerous, bloodthirsty people. I got off the plane. I figured I was going to be murdered. You know. But then I quickly found out that the Chinese are cultured, educated, ambitious, hardworking, and then I realized, well, China is the next great country in the world. I better learn a lot more about China. And here she is. When was the time you figure out this country is on the rise? 1988. I drove my motorcycle from Shanghai to Pakistan, all across China, and I was stunned every day. They were. All these people working from dawn to dusk in the fields everywhere. Nobody stopped. They saved a lot of money. It was just astonishing to see everybody, everybody, working all the time and being very ambitious and attentive. Dad and told you about those days. Yeah, Happy? absolutely. He loves talking about his trips across <laughs> China. Well, he made a movie. I made a documentary of it, and I make her watch it. All the time. <laughs> I make her watch the documentary. <laughs> Riding my bike across China is something I've wanted to do for as long as I can remember. I'm only going to live once. When I die, I don't want to have people say about me, "Well, Jim Rogers was a great Wall Street investor," and that's it. I want to get out there and see what's going on in the world. I've got no wife, I've got no children, no responsibilities. Why not? I think I really would have liked to have been a Pony Express rider. I'm doing this trip just for me. I don't care about being on television. I don't even have a television. It's my trip, 8,000 kilometers in 36 days from Shanghai to Pakistan. It's going to be the perfect adventure. Things have changed so much. Certainly, China has been on the rise for quite some time, and yet we see the relations, though, between China and the United States is in a stage of great change. Jim, I just wondered, you know, as someone who came to this country who can read the Chinese minds, I have to say, what actually is going on here in this country? And how do you see this change? It is madness what's happening in Washington. China and America should be friends and be great prosperity together, do great triumphs together. And for some reason, America has it in its. Are some people, not everybody, some people in Washington have it in their heads that they need to bash China. I just don't understand it because together. I mean, everywhere I've ever been in China, the Chinese love Americans, and America. They don't like Washington necessarily. I don't like Washington necessarily, <laughs> but it's just amazing because together we could just do fabulous things together. And Washington keeps messing it up. What can we hold on to in order to get over that stage or the current stage?、Uh, I hope I survive it. We just. Just keep your head down. Don't get deep in debt, and don't get overextended.、Mm. That's what you're doing in your business, right? That's what I'm doing in my business, in my private life, in my children's lives, everybody's lives. I'm trying not to get too extended. Happy. Some say it is exactly your generation that the Americans are do not necessarily see that their lives are necessarily better than their parents. Of course, you are in Asia. You see a very different picture. This is pretty much a continent still on the rise in Singapore as well.、Um, how do you see those comments? Have you visited some parts of America? What have you noticed about that country? I mean, it's a country you, where you were born, but not necessarily where you are being raised up. As often as I can, I visit my grandparents、mm -hmm. in North Carolina, and it's. 
They live, and my mother was born there too. It's a very, very small town, only 50,000 or so people. And so I see that, I mean, you, you see New York City, which is huge and bustling and amazing, but then there are also smaller towns and smaller uh, little tiny places that, that really are what America is about because America isn't all you know, like New York or, or Los Angeles. Just like China isn't all about Beijing and Shanghai. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You go to New York City, you haven't seen America. You go to Moscow, you haven't seen Russia. Do you think that your life was better, Daddy? My life was better than my parents' lives, yes. There's Do no question about that. Do you think my life was better than your life? Well, you're only 15. Yeah. <laughs> so far, your life, <laughs> when you're 15, is better when I was 15, that's yeah. for sure. Ask us in a little bit. And I just wonder about you. You know, you're already coming from a globalized generation. So what does that mean to you when you travel around Chinese universities, see and talk to your peers? When we go to any new place or any new country that's different from, I grew up in Singapore or even America, it's, it's like this perfect little melting pot of, of, of all the different cultures of the world where I get to experience the, the different sides of the world and kai kuo shi yi. You know, yeah, exactly. I am very blessed to be able to do that. And going to the Chinese universities, it's lovely because you see a different side. Even though Singapore education is, is there are lots of tests and everything else, but it's nothing compared to here in China. <laughs> and oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and Chinese universities, I would love to come to one of them when I, well, I'm 15, so I have a few years to think about it, thank goodness. Mm -hmm. But when I do have to decide, I'm definitely thinking about it, if only just because my Chinese will improve so much if I do come here. You can see she is pretty much comfortable everywhere she goes. Yeah, it was, as I say, when she's 15, I had never been anywhere. I probably couldn't find China on a map when I was 15. She's been to all these places and she speaks these languages and has traveled everywhere. But no, it's an entirely different generation. Many say, Happy, your generation is really a globalized generation. Wherever you go, you could feel comfortable and you talk to your peers. They're coming from different cultures. Uh, but many wonder, Jim, I'm going to come back to you about that question too. Many wonder whether this will be the trend because we see a lot of debates going on in the world about multilateralism or not, globalization or not. I'm happy when you see those debates, whether it's on TV or over the dinner table between your father and their friends. Mm -hmm. From your generation, from your own perspective, what is it? Um, globalization, modernization, everyone has a phone, um, Zhu, you know, that's what they say in Chinese where everyone is always looking down. I mean, there are of course pros and cons to that, but globalization is just everywhere. But we also have to think about the fact that, well, I'm blessed, you're blessed, we're all blessed to be able to experience the, the benefits and the merits of globalization. There are some people who haven't been able to yet. The risk, of course, is that throughout history when things go bad, politicians blame foreigners. Mm. Doesn't matter which country, everywhere throughout history, foreigners have different skin color, different language, different religion, they smell bad, <laughs> their food smells bad. I cannot tell you, wait, no, I cannot tell you how many times I've heard people say, and their food smells bad. <laughs> I mean, it's astonishing. Politicians will stir up trouble. Not just politicians. Everyone. I understand, but politicians know how to feed it and make it worse because when things are wrong, it's easy to blame somebody else. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be, when things get bad, you should be, I'm worried. Uh, you should be worried. I'm worried. I think a lot in the world are worried. I hope so. Maybe we can solve the problem if enough of us get worried. You know, Jim, it's about two things. One is how shall we understand the legacy? that we have been creating together. I mean, many have been creating together. Secondly is, from now on, where are we moving to? And how can we get there? Look out the window. The 21st century is going to be the century of China. This is not the direct question you asked. You said, where are we moving? We're moving to Asia, I assure you. And again, many Western countries are in decline. It's sad. I don't like saying it. I'm, you know, Western Caucasian. I don't like it at all. But I have to face facts. So make sure everybody <laughs> learns Mandarin. <laughs> and you are too. I mean, I'm hopeless. What is the latest I'm phrase not, you pick up? I'm not smart enough to, <laughs> to learn Mandarin. I'm not smart. Which phrase should dad learn? 
Tell them the second thing you learned in China, not the first, the second thing, second phrase. The, the Bing Pichu, because I was having so many problems. I learned cold beer, <laughs> give me a beer. <laughs> and it was hard to find. It was hard to find a cold beer in those days. In those days, 35 years ago, yes, yeah. indeed. But, you know, today you could pretty much live comfortably anywhere in this country. But it's such a wonderful thing to have both of you happy and Jim sitting here with me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Happy. Yes. The stories of star investor Jim Rogers and his daughter Happy Rogers, who is a Chinese social media star. And that's all the time we have for today. If you'd like to see more, try to find us, World Inside, or check out our YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook. I'm Tian Wei. On behalf of the team, thanks for watching. Bye for now.